Coming up in this episode of the Theme Park News Show, I share all the latest news on the new rides coming to the SeaWorld Parks and Busch Gardens in 2020. Along with that, there's news from Hansa Park on two new rides, concept art for Frozen Land coming to Disneyland Paris, and much more. It's Friday the 13th of September 2019, and this is the Theme Park News Show. I'm Sean Sandbrook and welcome to the Theme Park News Show. As always, there's been brand new videos every day here on our channel, including the day one and day two vlogs from Energylandia in Poland. I went out there last week and went to experience Zadra, the brand new RMC coaster that was absolutely spectacular. Uh, so make sure you check out those vlogs that are now both online here on the channel. Uh, coming up this weekend, tomorrow, uh, as in Saturday, there's going to be a brand new travel vlog that will show the journey from the UK over to Finland for my first ever visit to Lynn and Mackie and then on Sunday there'll be the main vlog itself uh, from Lynn and Mackie which is the amusement park located right in the city centre of Helsinki. Had an absolutely awesome day there, really good fun and again we got permission to film lots of on-ride footage including on that new Intamin Blitz Coaster Tiger. Um, so yeah lots of first reaction footage, it was also my first Halloween event of the year um, so yeah make sure you check that out, that'll be coming online on Sunday. Uh, but yes, as always, lots and lots has gone on in the theme park industry, lots of news to talk about. Uh, so let's move into news on the tracks. Now it may have only been D23 just a couple of weeks ago where there was the big announcement over in California where they announced projects for the Disney parks across the world. However this week Disneyland Paris have held a press conference where they've released some more details on the future of the resort. Uh, the biggest thing we can take from that is some new concept art for the Frozen theme land uh, coming to Walt Disney Studios. Here it is. Uh, I mean there's lots of stuff going on in that image. Uh, as you can see it's like a Scandinavian harbour town with a lighthouse off to the right a huge castle and then you've got the mountain range at the back it looks like you've got Elsa's ice palace up there on the hillside I expect that to be some forced perspective um, yeah it certainly looks very exciting doesn't it I mean I like all the details in there little areas where you can just sit down taking all the area and just get sort of get lost into the whole world of Frozen uh, I really like the look of this they've also confirmed there's only going to be one actual ride coming to the area one attraction uh, that is expected to be a version of Frozen Ever After which is the boat ride that opened at Epcot at Walt Disney World in 2016. Um, Hong Kong Disneyland, they're building a Frozen themed area, but there's two rides going into there. There's actually a little roller coaster as well going in. Um, so, you know, it's interesting to see with this one, there's only the one ride. However, that doesn't mean it won't be added in the future. You've got to think this is part of a much bigger project for the studio park. Um, but yeah, looking again at that image, you know, all the buildings look really nice on there. Um, I really look forward to just sitting on a bench and taking in that area because it looks lovely. Lovely. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the plaza around by Ratatouille, all the Parisian streets, and that's what I'm kind of expecting with this. It looks very, very nice. Uh, we also know there's going to be new restaurants, shops, meet and greets, all part of this area. Because uh, it does look huge, considering there's only one attraction. It looks like quite a big area. You've got the street off to the left there. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. The Frozen theme land uh, coming to Walt Disney Studios. Still no official date for this yet. Uh, there were some rumours flying around saying this might be ready for 2023. Um, and Star Wars 2025 but again nothing is officially confirmed from Disney uh, and when it is I'll keep you up to date here on the channel some more news from Disneyland Paris then and that is from one of my favourite ever Disney attractions, one of my favourites ever in a theme park, it's the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror uh, now we knew earlier this year there was going to be some changes coming to it in terms of random drop sequences uh, so instead of you going on the ride and it being the same every time, um, there was going to be some random drop sequences, however there's so much more than that that's actually starting from the 28th of September uh, this won't just be an addition for Halloween, it's going to be for the foreseeable 
foreseeable future of that attraction, which is good to see because there's going to be new lighting, new projections, new film images, a new soundtrack, and of course, uh, the adjusted ride program with them sequences. So very exciting, isn't it? There's going to be three different storylines for this uh, that I'm really looking forward to. You've got the Melevant Machine, uh, that sounds quite interesting, the Shaft Creatures, and the fifth dimension. So yeah, then three different stories. Uh, however, they all revolve around the same sort of thing. And that's a little girl who, according to the story, mysteriously went missing uh, when the Hollywood Tower Hotel was struck by lightning in 1939. And the girl's ghost still roams around in the hotel. So it's gonna be three different stories, but all that relate to that. So this little girl that's gone missing, you know. So it sounds really, really good. I'm looking forward to seeing it. It is one of my favorite ever theme park rides. And I think they're going to do a good job actually with this. I think it's going to enhance it even more. I was a big fan of when they announced the random drop sequences. And I can't wait to get to Disneyland Paris over Halloween and go and see this. But like I say, it isn't uh, just a Halloween edition. It's starting for Halloween, but it's going to carry on for the foreseeable future. Moving on then to Hansa Park in Germany uh, that have announced the closure of attraction but then building a couple of new things. Uh, you may have seen the vlog from when me and Harry went earlier this year. There was a certain ride what we really wasn't impressed with. Um, it translates into English to the bow and it was literally a flat ride where you sit in a bow and it swings back and forwards. Apparently it used to be much better. It used to swing a lot higher. It used to be like fire effects and everything. We saw none of that. It was just very mediocre swinging ride and I thought it looked a bit ugly as well to be honest you got the beautiful theme buildings all around and then this big bow that sat there in the area so um, yeah that is being ripped out which I'm very very pleased about and two new attractions coming in two family attractions uh, there's going to be a new family water ride and also a drop tower as well uh, the water ride will take you around various different bits of theming. Um, you know, it's going to be for a family attraction. The drop tower will be 11 meters tall, and it's all going to fit like with the pirate theming of some of the other attractions in the area and buildings. So, yeah, I think it'll look quite nice. You can see in the concept art there for it as well. Very heavy theming. Hansa Park are up in the theming quite a lot, aren't they? I mean, you've got to look at Highlander, the new tower ride that opened this year. All that area around there looks great, and Nessie, um, you know, that classic attraction there that classic coaster that all fits in with it nicely um, so yeah yeah this is towards the other side of the park behind Carnan and yeah I think it'll be a really nice addition to the park and I think it'll certainly look a lot better uh, than what there is there now at the moment uh, but yeah that's two new attractions coming as part of that themed area opening at Hansa Park in 2020 Moving on then, it's been a big week for announcements from SeaWorld Parks and Resorts. So I'm going to go through some of the investments now for the theme parks. Starting off with SeaWorld Orlando. They're going to be opening their sixth roller coaster in 2020 and it's going to be called Icebreaker. Here's a look at the ride and as you can see, it's going to be a family thrill ride uh, manufactured by Premier Rides. It'll actually be a Skyrocket model, but it won't be like the Skyrocket 2, you know, where it's a standard layout. With this, it'll be a unique layout and it'll feature a quadruple launch with a top speed of 52 miles an hour. Uh, now much like Copperhead Strike at Carowinds, uh, yes that's a Mack ride and this is Premier, but it is going to feature a similar element. It's going to actually have some of the launches over the airtime hills. So that'll be quite cool. You'll feel airtime, you'll come out your seat as you're going over the launches. So that'll be quite a nice experience. Um, it'll also feature a 93 foot tall spike at 100 degrees. So that's going to be really, really nice to see. Uh, there'll be an 80 foot tall top hat uh, and yeah it looks like a really nice investment I like the name Icebreaker uh, would have been nice if it was all sort of around some of the other ice theming they've got I mean the whole penguins area that's got like big ice sculptures and stuff you know me I kind of like it when parks put things that relate together uh, you know this is at the other side of the park however I'm looking forward to seeing it I think it'd be a nice addition they've got some great coasters there some big thrill rides you've got to think of the likes of Mako, Manta, Kraken and then now they've got some more family rides going in. See all the Lando is just getting better in terms of the rides. So I look forward to uh, seeing this one in 2020. Uh, there's no full POV of the ride, but as you've seen there, there's been just some teasers really and a few images from it as well. The big one then coming to SeaWorld Parks and Resorts next year is at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay as they've now officially announced Iron Guazi, which is an RMC conversion of the former Guazi roller coaster. That did feature two different tracks with Iron Guazi, they're combining it all into one track, one big layout. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this a lot. So I'll put some footage in again for you. Unfortunately, there's still no full POV of this yet. It's just some teaser POVs as I call them, you know, going through little parts of the 
elements. Uh, but what we do know is some hard facts. And then it's going to be 206 foot tall. It's going to have a top speed of 76 miles an hour. And it'll be the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the whole of Florida, in the whole of the state. So I like the sound of that. Um, it's also going to be the tallest hybrid coaster in North America. It's topping steel vengeance, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, it's also going to be the same height as Zadra at Energylandia with the coaster that I rode last week. Um, it was a great ride. You really felt the speed on there. So it gets me excited for Iron Guazi. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it's crazy the fact that Top in Steel Vengeance now, they're going in there with this height and uh, yeah, it's actually going to have a longer drop um, and much steeper drop as well than Zadra Energylandia, you know, it'll carry on for longer, even though it's the same height, Zadra sort of starts to peter out a bit, whereas this will continue more, um, you know, so I'm looking forward to riding that and, and the forces you're going to get. Uh, the 91 degree drop um, that is going to be on there, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, now, RMC who are doing the conversion, they estimate that 40% of the wood from the original Guazi will be used in the structure. There's going to be 12 moments of airtime throughout 4,075 feet of track. Uh, like I said, there's no full POV of the ride at the moment, but there's going to be lots of different uh, elements on there the, with the inversions, the airtime hills, some really nice banking. It's going to be a great ride, really intense. Love the track colour. Not too keen on the name, I must say, Iron Guazi. Bear in mind, you know, originally Guazi, you know, it's a completely different theme, you know, to, to what it looks like they're going with now. It looks like it's like a crocodile and stuff, so I'm not 100% too sure on what they're going for theming-wise. And some of the concept art looks a bit iffy as well. However, I think the ride's going to be fantastic, and I look forward to seeing it when it's all complete. Uh, but yeah, the ride itself, um, you know, looks like it's going to have a really nice long layout to it as well. You know me, I like rides that have got a good length to them. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you all up to date on Iron Guazi. Quasi. Final announcement then for the theme parks. I mean, there's been water park announcements as well. Um, but yeah, in terms of the theme parks, and this will be the tallest, longest, and fastest wooden coaster in Texas, just under 3,400 feet of track. And as you can see, we've got a full POV of this one. So I'm putting that in now from the top of the left for you so you can see that. It's got a 55 mile an hour top speed on this one. And yeah, you know, again, the layout looks really nice for it. Uh, the new coast is going to feature a 100 foot long tunnel, as well as multiple different banks and turns. And you can see of the, some of those now, actually, in this POV. Looks like it's going to have some good speed to it. I mean, yeah, they say 55 miles an hour, but it looks like it's taking some of the elements really nicely there. So I uh, look forward to riding this at some point in the future. Uh, some of the angles there on some of the banks are actually going to approach 80 degrees. So you're going to be properly banked to the side as you go through some of these elements that's really going to add to the overall experience. Uh, but yeah, that's coming to SeaWorld San Antonio uh, and that's the Texas Stingray. So yeah, I look forward to riding that at some point in the future. Are you planning to visit out to go and ride any of these new attractions at these different parks? I'd love for you to let me know. And of course, these haven't been the only announcements from SeaWorld. We already know there's a dive coaster coming to San Diego and some smaller investments in the water parks and other bits as well. So yeah, very, very big year for them next year and of course I look forward to following it as always um, here on Theme Park Worldwide. Are you going out to any of these parks next year? Let me know down below in the video comments. Over to France then now, and as mentioned in a previous episode, Futuroscope will be opening a brand new roller coaster in 2020, and it'll actually be their first roller coaster. At the moment, the park's filled with lots of different walkthrough experiences, simulators, shows, and it looks great, and I am planning a visit for 2020. And now they're putting in this coaster, it's like the big draw for me to go there and experience that and see the rest of the park for the first time. And uh, yeah, more details have been announced about the ride. Objective Mars uh, will have a top speed of 34 miles an hour. Uh, visitors will enter a new training center uh, where they have to prove they are suitable for an important space mission that will take place in 2040. So there we go. Um, sounds like an interesting story behind it. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Mission Space at Epcot Walt Disney World with the whole training center and gearing up for a mission. Uh, we'll be able to put a date on it, 2040, you know. So I think it'll be an interesting ride to, to go on with that whole story behind it means that you know after 2040 it's gonna have to have a bit of a retheme or updating it isn't it because of the date they're putting in it's not that far away is it really 20 odd years uh, but yeah it's gonna be a roller coaster manufactured by Intamin it'll be a spinning coaster and it looks great from the concept art it, I like how it sort of dips what I can presume is the entrance it, it sort of dips underneath and back out the other side that's quite nice uh, it's partially indoor partially outdoor uh, and yeah I think it'll be a really nice investment for them spending a lot of money on it 22 million euros 
euros for this one and it's a lot I mean that's for the overall project the cost of the coaster the building everything you know um, so yeah you know you got to think it's a big project for them especially with it being a big show building as well and digging down for tunnels and stuff by the looks of it um, you know but it's, it's a lot of money to spend on a ride so I'm looking forward to seeing this one I'm expecting a lot of effects and it's their first coaster there so I think they're really going to go in with a bang and open something spectacular with this one um, but there we go I'll keep you up to date as always on Objective Mars at Futuroscope in France. Final bit of news to talk about then this week uh, is from Legoland Windsor. They've announced the name for their new 2020 coaster. Mentioned about the planning permission uh, a few weeks ago. We can presume that's all been granted. And uh, yeah, the coaster's going to open in Duplo Valley in 2020. And it will be called the Duplo Dream Coaster. And here's a look at the logo there as well. Uh, the park is saying that you'll be able to watch your little one's imaginations fly as they ride their first ever coaster in the heart of Duplo Valley. So we can assume this is going to be a very 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 small ride it looks like a, very, a figure of eight style layout and um, so yeah I don't think we can expect much in terms of thrills but it's gonna be like a first coaster isn't it so you know it's interesting to see because you've got to bear in mind there's only two other coasters at the park they really need something high throughput though soon I mean a lot of these coaster investments they've put in since it opened have been like you know smaller throughputs they need something with a big throughput to really soak up the crowds at some point in the future uh, but maybe that might come let me know your thoughts on that announcement for Lego Land Windsor as always down below in the video comments it's now time for where am I Where am I? Let's start off then by showing you all the zoomed in image that I revealed to you last week. So there it is, quite a few people got this one right and it was actually on the Terralian Tub Twist at Joyland in Great Yarmouth on the seafront here in the UK. So well done to anybody who got that one right. Now remember this segment is just for fun and just before I show you another one, this will be the final one now for a few weeks uh, because next Friday will be the final episode uh, before me and Charlotte go on our holidays over to Orlando, Florida. There's going to be lots of vlogs coming to the channel uh, there'll be no new show for a couple of weeks and it will return on October the 11th um, just in time for all the spooky season to kick in uh, but yeah that's because you know we want to maximize the amount of time we've got in the parks and filming vlogs for you guys and uh, have a little break of course uh, from doing our weekly episodes so make sure uh, you stay tuned for all the different vlogs coming from Florida and the show will return on the 11th of October uh, after the final one which will be next week um, so here we go here's another image then zoomed in for you all uh, the final one for a few weeks and then we'll get a bit spooky with them then uh, but here we go guess where I am and all you need to do is comment down below and I'll reveal it in next week's show So it's time for the final part of this week's episode. As always, it's your theme park moments. The part of the show where you get to send in your photos that are theme park related and also any birthday shout outs as well. Uh, again, just a quick reminder, as next Friday will be the last episode before we take a short break uh, whilst we're away in Florida. Uh, please, if you want anything sending in for next Friday, get it sent in to us by 9 p.m. on Wednesday evening next week uh, to guarantee that it is in for Friday's episode. Uh, so here we go, let's go through the photos from this week. Firstly starting with George who's got a photo on Rage. We then got Jake outside Vampire just there and then we've got Richie and Becca outside Shambhala. Moving on we've got Emily who had a photo there with Pardus. Great there with Symbolica in the background. Up next then we've got Pepin uh, with a Bob on ride photo. Probably saying your name wrong there. I do apologise because my pronunciation is absolutely terrible. Uh, but there we go. Thanks for sending that one in. Then we've got Jake at Chessington just there. And then we've got George with the Galactica on ride photo. Moving on, we've got Michelle and Nathan on Vampire. And then we've got Brandon with the Saw on ride photo. Moving on from that, we've got Ella and the family outside Untamed at Wallaby Holland. And then we've got Rakeem and friends at King's Dominion. Moving on from that, we've got James and Susie at Port Aventura. And then we've got Bex and Matt at Fantasialand. Hope you had a wonderful time. Then we've got George on Stealth. And moving on, we've got Frankie and George on The Walking Dead The Ride. We've then got Ethan with the Space Mountain on ride photo. And then we've got Theo and Georgina on Galactica. Up next, we've got Julie and Dylan uh, on Galactica just there as well. And then we've got Adam and Sam at Europa Park. Up next, it's Kelly at Disneyland Paris. And then we've got Chris and the family at Efteling. Moving on, we've got Aiden and Mayo uh, on It's a Small World just there. And then we've got Jack with a Rita on ride photo. 
Next up, we've got Althea in a photo there with Alex. And then we've got Ian on the Rumba Rapids. Next up then, we've got Dom with a Blue Fire on ride photo. And following that, we've got Dal, Luke, Kelly and Adam at Legoland. We then got Sian and Chloe with a Wicker Man on ride photo. And then we've got Riley with a Rock and Roller Coaster on ride photo. Carrying on then, we've got Junior and Family on Val Raven. And then we've got Jake at Alton Towers. Also at Alton Towers then, we've got Finley. And then we've got Lucy and Lewis, who had a picture with me and Alex. Moving on, we've got Jenny with a flying fish on ride photo. And Stephen's up next, outside Fury. Uh, up next then, we've got Sarah outside the big one just there. And then following that, we've got Samantha at Disneyland Paris. Uh, next up then, we've got Brian and Anne at Port Aventura. Followed by Therese with a tidal wave on ride photo. Moving on, we've got Sam and Christopher at Terra Mitica just there. And then we've got Ola with a Walking Dead on ride photo. Up oh, next then we've got Joe with an accelerator on ride photo. And then we've got Brandon and Kira at Movie Land. Up oh, next then we've got Smarty on Cobra just there. And then we've got Carl at Port Aventura. The final photo this week comes from Phil and Michelle at Fantasyland. Hope you both had an absolutely wonderful time. Moving on then to the birthdays. And a big special mention to all of these people from myself and everyone here at Theme Park Worldwide. Happy birthday to Jake, Miles, Phil, Lucy, Alison, Samantha, Joshua, Amelia, Florence and Connor. And thank you to all of you for supporting Theme Park Worldwide and watching our YouTube channel. There we go, that is all for this week's episode. If you want to send something in, of course, message it in to us by Wednesday at 9pm. Charlotte will get back to you. And of course, you can send them in via the usual methods. That's a messaging service on Facebook and also Instagram as well. And I'll be back next Friday with the final episode before we take a short break. And of course, when we come back, it'll be straight in with lots of different Halloween videos and so much more here on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching. And that means it's time to cue those credits. See you next Friday.